you lot that have been hanging around for a while know about this picture. This is a picture that I have been hoarding for quite a while now that is going to be part of a flip up page because I just love this image and how it looks. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to stick this picture to this um, back page. And I showed you some of the ways that I use um, my gel prints. So this, this back here is just going to be the back of this picture. And we can get it down okay. It doesn't have to be like crazy. And the reason why I'm not using like a gel medium or Mod Podge or anything like that is because I want it to lie perfectly flat. Um, I don't always care, but for this I do care because it's such a pretty picture. And we're probably going to emboss it to keep it kind of safe. I'm doing a lot of heavy duty embossing on this journal. I'm gonna put this right kind of in the middle. If it's not exactly in the middle, I'm fine with that, but I need it to be not over this line. Okay, there we go. Now, we want to Look, Tim Holtz made me frames. You just buy these frames and they fit, they're like a window frame. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a window frame where we can see our train in it. How freaking cool is that? Do we want it like right in the middle? I think right there. Okay. So on this line, this far in, on this line, this far in, we got everything kind of straight. This is going to be an important one. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and I'm going to cut this part out. And you'll see I'm not going all the way to where we want it. That way, if I want to move it up or down or around a little bit, I can. So let's get this out of the way. For once, I am not going to glue on my stuff because that picture isn't protected yet. Okay. And I thought this turned this page turned out awesome. Very industrial looking. There we go. There we go. Cut in the middle. If we get it cut in the middle a little bit, it will be easier to cut. There we go. Now we can just. So this is just the first cut we're making, right? This is for the hole, but then we're gonna cut it again to make the flippy flappy. You'll see. So that the window can open and we can see the whole picture. Okay. There we go. All right, that's just perfect, isn't it? Okay, so we can go all the way out to the edge now. So we wanna go outside of this line. I don't want this marker to touch the edge because it would definitely get on the edge. So we wanna go outside of this line. Okay. And on stuff like this, I don't mind cutting a few times. This is a, what do they always say? 
measure twice, cut once. This is, I'm never unhappy when I measure twice and cut once on a project like this. There we go. There we go. We're just trying to get so we can put our window on there. And this is a really stable page. This is the page that I hated. You didn't see this part. But when I was doing my um, gel press, I hated, like I did this page three times and I just kept putting layers of um, paint down on it until I liked it. Because as collage artists, what do we have that ha that's our superpower? Paint and glue. Yay, us. Okay, there we go. All right. So we have this cool. All right, we can go a little more on the sides, just a weensy bit. And which side do we want to go on? Well, I think I want to go on this side because I need to leave integrity in that in that side. Because we're going to make a flippy page out of this, so we can't get too close to the edge there. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Tim Holtz, for making me a window. Look at that. So now we have a window. And we know we can glue it on there. But now we want to see how big our picture is. So we want to come. So this line, let's get this over here. So this line to say this line. It's pretty bad when you can write on the gunk on your, um, so it's this line. When you can write on the gunk on your, craft desk, right? We're a classy establishment here, people. Okay. So we want to get this all lined up. And then we need our ruler. We're going to use these lines. See? This way we can make straight lines. I'm so smart and pretty. Okay, so we're going to come over here. Boop. And come about halfway in the middle of there. Because don't forget, that, that, um, it'll be fine. Nobody will, the, it, there's a slight chance the papers aren't straight, right? And let's go across with this line. And then... come down with this one. All right, now we can't do the cool cutty outy thing. We gotta just cut the line. So we're gonna start over here and I'm just gonna, ouch. This will really hurt when it goes through. So be careful, cause this is, if you're using a super thick paper and you shove your, um, especially your Tim Holtz snips through, it can really hurt. So you wanna be careful there. And we will probably um, reinforce this with washi tape or something else, but don't worry about that line. And you could have turned it over and done all kinds of stuff so the line wasn't on the front. But honestly, with everything that's going on, nobody is ever going to notice my line. You could have used a pencil to make the line so it was easier. But I just don't... I just don't worry about my lines. Okay. Now we want to get a straight a straight edge on here and we're going to have to go a little bit more on this line to get us up to that line, which is fine.
Okay. Now we want a straight edge so that we can bend this straight. Let's see, if we need to come in just a teeny bit. There we go. Okay, whew. I think I need a teeny bit. Because we want this to bend super nice. Okay. So it pulled off a little bit of the paper, which is fine. Nobody will know that. And we're going to have to paint this part, do something to it. And somehow I've lost my bone folder. So we're using the back of this spatula to be our bone folder. And we could even go this way one time. This paper is, um, there's a lot of layers. I am not going to damage this paper by um, folding it a couple times. Just ain't gonna happen. All right, let's make sure we're over top. See, we can open it up and see our whole, that's cool. That makes me happy and reminds me of my dad. And then don't forget, we're gonna put this on here, just like that. And now we need something to help lift this up. We're gonna to have to make a tab. Oh, you know what? Hold on, hold on. We made, I made, oh, that won't work. No, absolutely not. Okay, I have some tabs hanging around on my desk. So let's do that one. Don't you have tabs hanging around on your desk? And we can just go right there, but we want to get, we want to do some stuff first. So I want to do a couple of things. So first off, I want to fix my, my, my um, border here. But I want to do it with something cool. So I have this aged black embossing enamel. I want it to be a feature rather than like just something weird. So we're just going to use our um, embossing brush pen. Ooh, that's a nasty one. Perfect. And we're just going to go along here because this is going to be really thick, 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 thick powder. Let's go this way. All right, and I am going to emboss it from underneath. So I'm gonna do all this embossing and I'll be, well, I'll yeah, I'll show you when I'm done. Now, this looks amazing, right? And we are going to, <laughs> it might've embossed some of it to itself, just ignore that. Okay, so we have a couple things we wanna do. First off, I want to show you what I mean by embossing it from the bottom. So we're going to take this tag, we're going to emboss that whole thing in this really cool aged black. So we're just going to go and we're going to get embossing powder or embossing liquid on the whole front of this. Right? Uh-oh, we got to find our squeezers too. We're going to get this on here. Okay. Okay. As long as you have the embossing powder on there, you're going to be fine. You can look for your squeezers. Oh, da, da, da. There's our squeezers. Yay. All right. So. This is not going to be perfect, but we're going to have a really good time seeing this. And if we put some on here, we can make this pretty thick. So when we emboss from the bottom, it means that we're not blowing. So the part that I just put on there, if I tried to emboss this, it would just blow it right off, right? So we're going to emboss it from underneath and get it started, heated up, and then it kind of helps itself.
Okay, now that we have this going, we can have a little bit more latitude. kind of move that embossing goo around. I'm trying to get it down to cover this bottom corner, but it might not do it. Okay, so now we're gonna let this cool because this is gonna be wicked hot. This is all melted plastic. So we don't wanna touch it. That's why you want your squeezers for this project. Okay, so it's been about a minute. It doesn't take long for it to dry, but you definitely don't wanna touch it when it's hot because that would, that would burn your fingers. All right, so we're gonna Put this on our, oh, maybe up here. Would that be cute? I like that. Okay, so, so we're going to my delightful daughter, Desi, gave me her leftover creme brulee frappuccino drinky thing, which makes me love her even more. All right, so we're going to put that on there. And we're going to put our creme frappuccino thing on here to give it a minute. That's a lot for um, a little, little bit of glue to hold. So we'll be back. That's been about two... That's... Well, like, that has been about two minutes the neighbor came home. Don't you hate when the neighbor comes home? Okay, so we need to paint the back of this. And I'm not going to paint this anything fancy. I am just going to, um, actually, uh, no, I want a color that is going to stay on there. Do we have black soot? There it is. So I like distress paint because it goes on pretty, oh, it's not super opaque meaning it's, it's a little translucent, but it dries faster than anything else I use. And the black soot is super um, uh, liquidy. I don't know why, but this, the back of this is not a feature. I just need to get, so it's not white open, you know, color. So we're putting this in the journal that has the B page that I did with you and then a giant foot I did without you. I cheat on you. And if you don't want to get paint on the underneath part, don't paint on your stuff like I do. Or you could put a paper in there to protect it. There's about a million things you could do to avoid getting paint on your stuff. I don't do any of that. Okay, so that's good. We just need that to dry. The other nice thing about the stress paint is I know you can dry the crap out of it because Tim Holtz dries the crap out of it. And I think that is because most acrylic paint has filler in it and this does not. Okay, there we go. All right, so the last thing we need to put on is our picture frame. Oh, tell me our picture frame will fit. Oh, we're gonna have to cut down our window a little bit more. Let's make sure our... train will still be in the frame. It will. Okay. Because we put that tab on, right? That is just fine. It could have been a debacle, but it's not. Okay, so we're gonna go a little outside of this. have very few debacles come up. Imagine that. Wally has to go potty. That never happens every single time we come in here to do our artwork. Oh, we have to go a little outside of it. Hang on. A little outside. Not too much, but just a little. Oh, Johnny got it. That Wally, he is a fun guy. His favorite thing to do is have a nice snoozle. And if anybody's sitting around, he wants to be the guy who gets to sit by them so he can have a snoozle with them. Okay, let's see. Aha, perfect. 
Okay, so now before we stick this on, I do want to um, uh, distress this a little bit. Ooh, there's something weird. There's something weird. All right, and I have a kind of distress glaze. Oh, it's this. I put my arm in that, and it has glycerin on it. Uh, this, actually, I have one that's called distressed paint or distressed wood. Distressed wood, weathered wood. Kind of want it to be dark though. I think I'm gonna make it a little bit dark. So we're not gonna put too much on it. Maybe we, maybe we do a mix. I hardly ever do a mix because then you can't put um, put more in. Let's do the black on the black parts. And then we'll see what we want to do with the uh, with the blue parts. Okay, here we go. So this is going to be uh, hickory smoke. It's actually gray, so that's good. My family's worried. I'm crafting and only have a vague idea about what I'm making for dinner. That is a bad situation all around. Ooh, I like that kind of black weathery look. We're gonna continue that a little bit more. Not all around, but at least a little bit more. Just to kind of frame this. Okay, Ooh, now I see that. Do we wanna just leave it white? Let's see what it looks like. Okay, weathered wood is, is blue. I do not want to introduce blue into here. Oh, I kinda just like the way it is, although I could do, I could be convinced to do yellow just because I like the yellow color so much. There you go, you talked me into doing the yellow. Oh, wait, I have, huh. oh, this is a rough one. I'm leaving this. I can always come back in and do it again if I want, but I really love the way that looks. We're not going one step too far to where I'm mad and I don't like it. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is we want to stick these sheets together. Now again, I don't want them to be wrinkly, so we're gonna use our Nuvo glue. And we can just cut through those little holes. And we are gonna, so we have some over here. And the thing I like best about Nuvo glue is that the nozzle never gets stuck. Okay. We know we can do some on this picture down here. And at least the top of this picture. Okay. So let's stick these guys together. And we're just going to line up those uh, disc holes. I love a disc bound journal. My real art journal is a disc bound journal. Okay. And we're gonna put this together. And I'm gonna glue on my window and then, so let me do that. We're gonna glue on the window and then I'm gonna stick a book on here. This is so wicked cool. I love that we have, uh-oh, I lied. First, we're gonna put window glass in our window because I have window glass. Oh, I'm so glad I didn't forget that. Okay, so I have these mica tiles that are so cool that we can use to put window glass in this window. So you can pull off just one layer, but I don't want just one layer, I want a couple layers. And I did this once already in the little house I made for Brittany. 
very cool. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna be able to do this if we cut them separately. So we're gonna go up in here, make sure we can, oh, can we just get it all on there? Oh, I think we can just, but it works. There we go, there's his, there's his glass in his window frame. And we can cut this off the bottom. You just cut it. It's called mica. It's um, it's a naturally occurring material. And now we can put our window frame on, and it's like we have glass in our window frame. How freaking cool is that? And then I will glue this, and then I will go cook dinner, and then I will be back. So we're going to put a whole pile of stuff on here. And we're going to make the dinner. All right, so a fine dinner was had by all. We had, oh, that might be done for. I left that open. Um, we had, I had baked stuff flounder and they had chicken breasts and we all had rice and corn. So, all right, let's put our mica tiles back. I really love how these look in, um, in projects where you want a little window between it okay and let's go these are the new plates i just got a new die cutting machine the spellbinders platinum we'll be looking at that i got a little pair of scissors metal dies metal dies metal dies i need to get some more of the um plates for those oh adhesive sheets nice okay so look at that it has an actual window in that window and then this is back here being kept safe let's get everything kind of out of there this didn't get stuck down very well so we'll have to do another little spritz i walked in here and i saw that i hadn't shut this very well but this side which is important gets shut down and i'll show you a trick Oh, this was left open. Poor thing. I mean, like, it does its very best. Oh, look. They gave me a little pokey tool. Let's see if this little pokey tool fits in there. Oh, I don't know if that did it. We may have to go to a hat pin. There we go. All right. Oh, it's just this top part. Okay, so this will just take a second. We're not going to fuss about that too much. That's just paper on paper. That's not the bajillion layers of stuff. Okay, so I do have a machine that will cut these holes in here. But the only thing that's in there is that little lightweight tissue uh, magazine page. So you can just do this, cut into these dies in case you're worried that if you get like this um, disc, oh, disc, excuse me. You get a disc uh, notebook like this that you won't be able to use it unless you have the die machine. Uh, that's all you do is you just cut through those and this isn't a, this isn't a problem with those holes. This is a problem with the 4,000 layers of paint and stuff that I have going on in here and then the dot uh the discs will um will loosen up eventually so let's see how this goes i was going to show you the rest of it since we're here my b and he has a flappy flap over top of him so you can see into him and then there's the foot which is just something fun and now we have this beautiful window that reminds me of my dad. So hopefully that helps. Tara Jacobson, Artsy Fartsy Life. <laughs>